what I want to do today is get down to a little bit of the nitty gritty about how actually we create carbon credits and what the value of those carbon credits are, how we actually get them to market and what the market wants of those carbon credits. The aim of, these, of the, what the government is doing is trying to make carbon as a commodity. But it's not like any other commodity that we have on a farm. It is created on farm, it's sold from the farm and it's traded like a commodity. But it's not like any other commodity in that we don't actually bundle it up and take it to the market. You're not going to see a truck like this wandering down the road with all your carbon credits stacked up on the back of it in nice little blue bal black balloons. It is actually a series of electronic digits in a registry somewhere. That's what we're actually trading. I don't know if anyone here has ever seen a carbon credit, but I've been doing it for 10 years and I've never seen one. I've seen plenty of digits in registries and I've pl created plenty of them, but we don't actually trade them. So we can't weigh it, we can't check the protein content, so we have to have these other systems to, d to deliver it. Now how carbon markets work, and, and this is why I like to talk about carbon markets at this point, is because being a commodity and you're actually going through a process of creating something, you need to make sure there's some value in it. And knowing what the value is, is partly knowing where you're going to sell it in the future. One of the first things I was taught in forestry was before you plant a tree, figure out where you're going to sell it in 30 years' time. You don't want to get to that point 30 years down the track and have no market for your carbon, for your trees. And this is no different. The gov the, just as the issue around carbon emissions or global emissions is very complex, unfortunately the response is also fairly complex. And there's a lot to carbon trading. But the basic way it works, and this works at an international level, works at a domestic level as well. Under the Kyoto process, we, we follow a very similar system to this. We've been given a whole heap of carbon credits by the Kyoto system, and every time Australia creates an emission, we have to match one of those emissions with one of our credits. If we run out of credits, we have to go and buy them from somewhere else. If we've got too many, we can sell them. So we have a cap on our emissions. And they've done the same thing domestically, where they've said, OK, what we're going to do is we're going to try and limit the amount of pollution. And Corey would have mentioned that we're trying to reduce our emissions in Australia by about 160 million tonnes between now and 2020. So the government knows what our cap is. And they're trying to limit that, and they issue a certain number of certificates to match the targets. And the value of that, those certificates are determined by the market. It's either going to be cheaper to buy an emission or an offset certificate from someone like me through growing trees or reducing the, um, the burping of my cattle than it, is, than, than it is to actually reduce the pollution coming out of my facility or the factory. So when you're starting to talk about ch changing from coal-fired to gas-fired electricity plants or generation, it, quite often it's cheaper to go and get the emissions somewhere else. It doesn't really matter where it comes from. The whole idea is to have a net effect on the atmosphere, to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere or going into the atmosphere. So the market will determine it, how much these certificates cost. The aim is to drive consumers to goods and services that have a lower carbon intensity or use other goods and services that don't have it. So we're trying to reduce all the carbon intensity in, our, in, our, um, in the goods and services. Um, so the companies have that decision. They can either reduce their pollution in their, in their facility or they can go and buy offsets or they can buy certificates from the market. So everyone has a share of how much emissions they can create, but some people have the ability to create, can, can, can reduce their emissions a lot easier than others. So they sort of say, well, as long as we don't go exceed the cap, we don't care, we don't mind how you go about reducing those emissions. And over time, the government will screw that, that cap down.